Bernie Sanders has now dropped out of the race. Joe Biden will be the Democratic nominee. Here in the U.S., we are up to over 1.5 million cases. 40 million Americans. This is a war zone. It's a medical war zone. It's of 10,000 people waiting at a food bank. The coronavirus pandemic will cause the worst global economic fallout since the Great Depression almost a century ago. That was the warning today from the head of the International Monetary Fund. Bernie Sanders fell short. A media blackout, establishment collusion, and too many mistakes to count stopped the momentum of the progressive movement. Progressives have often been called the fringe, the loony left, and American subculture. Yet in 2016 and 2020, progressives felt for the first time that they have a voice and a real chance at power. Progressive proposals overwhelmingly popular with the American public, yet written off by the corporate elite as radical, suddenly were launched into the national conversation. Our movement was capable of much more than sparking a conversation. Our movement was capable of a victory. On a game, not us. Take a walk around. Like one of Find someone you, know. you don't know. Like bird in 2016, Bernie challenged the political machine and mobilized this movement to win 22 primaries and 43% of national delegates. Bernie went from powerless radical senator to a national political symbol of the progressive cause. Bernie shattered grassroots fundraising records, drawing record numbers to rallies across the nation. A coalition of disaffected voters, independents, working class voters, and the youth powered Bernie's 2016 run. But it wasn't enough to overcome a democratic media and political machine determined to destroy progressive momentum. Yet the movement's push for power stretched beyond the presidency. Progressives primary and establishment Democrats across the nation Organizations such as Justice Democrats, Brand New Congress, and PCCC gained national prominence and installed progressive members of Congress. Labor movements exploded across the country, forcing local and state governments to implement a living wage. The Sunrise Movement and other youth climate organizations organized hundreds of thousands to mobilize for a Green New Deal. Medicare for All and tuition-free college legislation hit the congressional floor for the first time in decades. Still, our movement clearly had a long way to go. 2020 brought an even more determined democratic establishment. And as the months passed, Bernie arose from the pack. Yet slim victories, despite shady vote tallying and collusion in Iowa and New Hampshire, were somehow reported as losses. Yet Bernie's momentum continued on. In Nevada, Bernie eviscerated establishment challengers, nearly winning a majority in a field of over five presidential candidates. The Democratic media and political establishment shifted tactics. The blackout transformed into all-out misinformation. An entire press campaign of establishment sources was designed to convince voters that Bernie was somehow unelectable and radical. Bernie's team offered no real resistance. After Joe Biden's expected landslide victory in South Carolina, the entire establishment coalesced behind Biden, with Barack Obama pulling the strings. Pete dropped out and endorsed. Amy Klobuchar dropped out and endorsed. This was then followed by a better O'Rourke endorsement, handing Biden Texas. Millions of suburban and older voters flocked to the polls, convinced by mainstream media of Bernie's unelectability. According to exit polls, Bernie's policies were overwhelmingly popular amongst voters. Yet after four years of non-stop media pressure, the voters' number one concern was ousting Donald Trump, and they'd additionally been told the only way to do so 
was nominating Joe Biden. Post Super Tuesday, Bernie's team again offered no real resistance. After a walloping in the March 10th and March 17th primaries, Bernie was effectively eliminated, dropping out and endorsing Biden in early April. For progressives, Bernie's 2016 and 2020 runs leave a variety of lessons. For both outside activists and inside progressive policymakers, the progressive movement is not a movement structured for real change. It's a loose assembly of movements, powered by rage towards the establishment. Progressives must begin to realize that rage is not unique to our side. That rage is felt across every corner of this nation. Harnessing that common emotion into a powerful coalition is our path forward. Progressives must become an aggressive, united political force, fighting political war on two fronts, in the streets and in the legislature. An aggressive, unified, inside-outside strategy, and most importantly, utilizing that strategy to build a coalition of millions, white, black, brown, purple, all the oppressed peoples destroyed by this rigged system. First, let's focus on the inside part of the inside-outside strategy. Progressive policymakers have made a series of deadly mistakes during the 2020 election cycle and throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. In 2020, Bernie refused to go negative, refused to make electability a key part of the campaign strategy, refused to call corruption, corruption, refused to draw aggressive contrast between the losing strategy of neoliberalism and the winning strategy of progressivism. This can never happen again. Progressives must expand the tent. And for policymakers, this means winning every argument, combating every false narrative, winning the war of ideas and the war of politics. This means marketing our agenda as the true compromise, not the fantasy. This boils down to political intelligence, something our policymakers must develop for our movement's future. The COVID-19 pandemic saw both establishment Democrats and Republicans abandon the working class. But progressives relented and voted for the trillion dollar corporate bailouts, voted for the working class crumbs, instead of waging a true political resistance, instead of uniting as a political force and holding leverage to exact concessions, or utilizing the power of public narrative and opinion. This can never happen again. Progressives must become a political tsunami, aggressive, principled, and united, utilizing the weight of public opinion to exact concessions from the establishment. Political intelligence. Progressive policymakers must learn it for our movement's future. Now to the most important part of the inside-outside strategy. Grassroots mobilization is the engine to this movement. To truly see change in this country and give progressive policymakers serious power, it will require a mobilization of millions into the streets, the youth, the laborers, the entire middle and working class and poor all coming together rallying for real change. This mobilization must have organization that holds the system hostage, targets economic interests through general strikes and civil disobedience. This mobilization must also have clear demands, three or four sets of economic populist demands. A vast majority of Americans can get behind. With millions in the streets targeting economic power, the movement becomes the most powerful political force in the country. Because suddenly, powerful interests are forced to listen. This must be the next course for our movement. A united, organized, and aggressive 
inside-outside strategy that expands the progressive coalition to all walks of life in this country. In Appalachia, in Kansas, in North Philly, in Oakland, in the Bronx, in Atlanta, and across the nation, our people are being destroyed under the weight of a rigged system. The progressive movement must become those people's voice, swaying policy on the inside and demanding policy on the outside. Once barriers of class, race, and creed are broken and our people stand together, our dream and the establishment's worst nightmare becomes a reality.